Like many of you, I've had a lot of time on my hands this past week, trying to find creative ways to keep myself busy, to occupy the time. One of the great opportunities that I've had this week is to catch up with a lot of my priest friends serving throughout the country. It is great hearing all of their creative ways of ministering to the people of their parishes, to the different assignments, hearing of all the great things they are doing, despite all of the challenges that we face, to bring the gospel message, to bring the message of hope to the people they are serving. Hearing all of the creative ways in which they are using social media, using the internet, making makeshift confessionals or drive-by confessionals, so many great things that my brother priests are doing to make sure that all of you do not forget that the church is there for you, that God is very much with us throughout this crisis. One of the things that we have been sharing with each other are also some of the, the struggles, some of the challenges, the fears, the worries, the anxieties that we have, just the same as all of you. We are worried about our students who are out of school, we are worried about them maintaining their routine, about continuing their learning, we're worried about our teachers and all of the extra work that they have to try to communicate with their students using uh, a totally new way of teaching, using the internet, not having a classroom, not having students in front of them. We're worried about our parents. Some of them are out of work. Some of them, some of you, have financial worries. There are many people in our community that are beginning to lose hope. Many that are fearful of the future, not knowing what it holds. We as priests share those fears, those anxieties, those worries about the future. But there's something else that we all share, something else that we all have in common. And that is our faith, our hope. Our faith and our hope in Jesus Christ. And what a beautiful story that we have in today's gospel. The story of the rising of Lazarus. Lazarus and his two sisters, Martha and Mary, are good friends of Jesus. And they send word to Jesus that Lazarus is very sick, that he is nearing death. And Jesus waits a few days before he goes to see Lazarus. And many question, why would he wait? But he tells his apostles, if you notice, that his illness was not to end in death, but would be for the glory of God, that God was going to bring something great and something amazing out of this. When Jesus finally arrives, Lazarus is already dead. He's already been in the tomb for a few days. And what we encounter in this gospel is, I, I think, something very similar to what many of us are experiencing right now. Great sadness, great worry, great fear, lots of different emotion, similar to losing a loved one. We often hear this gospel at funerals. But listen to this encounter between Jesus and Martha. We see that these two sisters are dealing with their grief differently. Mary stays at home. Martha, she hears that Jesus is coming, and she runs out to meet him. And she captures in one line, I think, the emotion that many of us are feeling right now. She says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. How often are we saying in our own prayers, Lord, are you listening? Lord, do you care? Lord, are you even there? As all of this stuff is happening in our society, such sadness, such sickness, such tragedy, such crisis, where is Jesus Christ in all of this? Has he abandoned us? Is he not listening to us? Certainly not. My friends, Jesus Christ is there. And just the way God brought about something great through the death and the rising of Lazarus, Jesus Christ will bring about something great in all of this. But let's get back to that encounter with Jesus and Martha and Mary. What is happening there? Martha and Mary are sad. They're full of pain, full of emotion. And Jesus Christ comes to them to bring his peace, to bring his consolation, to bring his love, his mercy, to show his care to each of them. My friends, in this current crisis that is going on throughout the world, 
Jesus Christ once again comes to each of us to bring peace and consolation to our hearts. Jesus Christ is our Lord. He is the reason that we have faith. He is our hope. My friends, keep your eyes focused intently on Jesus Christ. This past week, the church celebrated the great feast of the Annunciation. In that moment, when God sent the angel Gabriel to Mary to announce to her that she would be the mother of his own son. You can imagine Mary feeling confused, anxious, worried about this, unworthy. How can this happen to me? Mary says. But the angel assures her, do not have fear. God has a plan. God is in control. As Mary mother of God's own son, the mother of Jesus, welcomed Jesus into her womb. My friends, I ask you to allow Jesus Christ into your heart. Renew your faith, your trust, your hope in him. Bon dia, meus amigos, e bom domingo a todos. Eu sei muito bem que estes dias são muito difíceis para todos nós. Eu sei também que muitos de vós estão muito tristes sobre não poder ir à igreja hoje e não poder receber Nosso Senhor em Santo Comunhão. Eu também estou triste. Mas quero garantir que tudo ficaram bem. Quero também garantir que estou a rezar por vós todos os dias. A quem enquanto estamos fisicamente distantes, nós estamos mais perto da nossa fé. Quando rezo a Santa Missa todos os dias, vos estão no meu coração. E quando eu recebeu a Eucaristia, rezo para que o Senhor Jesus encha cada um dos seus corações com amor Ele, com amor dEle, com sua graça, com sua misericórdia. Meus amigos, estes são dias difíceis, mas Jesus Cristo é nosso Senhor. Em é Nele, e somente Ele, está nossa confiança e nossa esperança. No Evangelho de hoje, ouvimos a história da morte de Lázaro, e como Jesus vem para a sua família? Jesus vem a Marta e Maria para oferecer sua paz e consolo. Hoje, nestes dias difíceis, Jesus vem a cada um de nós para trazer paz aos nossos corações e mentes. Não sei preocupa. Não sei temer. Jesus Cristo é o Senhor. Nós reuniremos um breve aqui, em nossa bela igreja paroquial. Celebraremos a ressurreição do nosso Senhor. Vamos celebrar a nossa fé. Estaremos juntos novamente. Reza por mim, por favor. E com essa minhas orações, todos os dias para vós. Deus vós abençoe.